The flow state to me is um, no more thoughts, just focusing on, okay, foot there, hand there, foot there, hand there. My next hold is a jug. Oh, this next sequence is two crimps. Climbing still kind of remained that like escape from, from life for a second. It was how I found joy and it was like how I spent my time. And as I made friends, it was, it just became like, it just became my source of happiness and like where I wanted to spend my time and find my joy. Oh man, I started climbing when I was like 12, 12 and a half, when I was sent to wilderness therapy out in Utah. I was sent to wilderness therapy because, honestly, I was just a closeted 12 year old boy. And I was probably a little bit of a turd. I would say I do feel more support in the climbing community than the outside world, because it's where all my friends are. Again, like, that's where my support system is. Um, I came out to my friends way before my parents and my, the rest of my family. So that's where, like, I felt the most comfortable. Like, I can still climb strong. Like, coming out didn't change. I mean, I became, like, a little weaker by losing a little muscle mass on hormones, but I was still just a strong, tall climber. <laughs> so I kind of remained in the same group of, like, setters really because for all those strong boys hang out they don't care about what's in your pants or how you identify i think it is important to have that representation in the industry because honestly it's a white male dominated sport and what's wrong with a little diversity it's everybody needs someone to look up to